Hi everyone, I'm so excited to continue the pet war with you today. We are on chapter 6, page 36, so follow along with me. Chapter 6, Sunday, March 4th, money saved, $15.40. You are not sawing me in half, Malcolm insisted. He shook his head and rolled his eyes, and everything else you can think of doing to show he was not kidding, and he thought I was insane. I'm not going to really saw you in half. It's magic, I insisted, flexing my old handsaw. Do you actually have any idea how to do this trick? He asked, eyebrows narrowing. Of course, I watched a video online. Magicians make a lot of money. One came to our school the year before, and he was awesome. He made our teacher disappear. Unfortunately, he then brought her back. So he, so his act wasn't perfect, but anything that entertaining had to pay well. I knew what I was doing, maybe. I wore a cape from an old Halloween costume. The amazing auto had a nice ring to it, and a cape and a cool name were half the trick for magicians. I also practiced saying hocus pocus. I taped, I taped some boxes together and found dad's rusted saw from the back of the garage. I just needed to volunteer for the classic saw someone in half trick. It was a guaranteed crowd pleaser. Not that I had a crowd, but I would. Once I perfected my act, which meant I needed Malcolm to help me practice. Besides, he owed me for teaching him how to juggle a soccer ball so well. You know, I won't really saw you in half, I assured him. It's a trick. You just need to scrunch up your body. The chances of me sawing you in half are very small as long as you scrunch up enough. I doubt I could even get through your bones anyway. It's an old saw. I tapped the saw's side and a dull and muted twang rang out. How about if I saw you in half? Malcolm suggested. Nope, I have to do it. I'm the magician. Plus, you're shorter than me. I'm shorter than you by like half an inch. That's half an inch less chance of being sliced in half. I lifted a pair of sneakers that had been in my closet forever. I'll put these on the other end. People will think your feet are sticking out. They'll think they're stinking out, said Malcolm, holding his nose. Those reek. I couldn't argue. I was surprised how much nicer my room smelled after I removed the sneakers from my closet although there were other sneakers still there that were only slightly less stinky. This wouldn't even be an issue if mom had just bought me the new basketball sneakers I asked for. New sneakers don't smell like anything but rubber. They don't smell as bad as your breath, I quipped. Vomit toes, he said. Beastie breath. Sneaker stinker. Iguana reeking monkey stench spewer. I hate you. It wasn't much of a comeback, but you doing what you can. Malcolm just shook his head and laughed. Come on, I wailed. I need an assistant. Sorry, not happening. Fine, forget the saw trick. To be honest, I wasn't entirely sure Malcolm could scrunch up enough to avoid being cut in half anyway. But this magician idea rules. I already have the cape and the name. What else do I need? The ability to do a magic trick, said Malcolm. I shot him a dirty look. I can do magic. I whipped my cape dramatically, very magician-like. Do you have any money? Maybe, said Malcolm, squirming. How much? I held out my palm. Malcolm slowly removed a five-dollar bill from his pocket. This is allowance money. I'm not, I'm not giving it to you. I've earned this. It's allowance money. That's just like free money from your parents. You earn it by breathing. Not true. Unlike you, I have chores. I have to clean my room, get good grades, and I set the kitchen table every night. Yes, they work you to, to the bone, I agreed. I don't know how you find time for yourself. I slapped my palm. Now hand over the money. It's a trick. I'll give it back. Malcolm hesitated, but gave me the chance to swipe the bill from his hand. This should be interesting, he muttered. I chose to ignore the comment. A good magician converts the doubters in the audience into believers. And now the amazing money trick from the amazing auto, I announced. I take this ordinary $5 bill. I waved it to show my audience of one. And I rip it in half. I tore the bill slowly for effect. Hey, that's my money, yelled Malcolm. 
I scrunched the paper into a tiny ball in my palm, and now I will magically put the two pieces together again. I tapped the wand <clears throat> on my closed fist. It wasn't a real wand, just two pencils I taped together. But with a lot of masking tape, it was sort of wand-like. Hocus pocus, I yelled with great flourish and magician-like command. I opened my palm. It's still in two pieces, said Malcolm, except now they're two scrunched up pieces. I looked at the two tiny paper balls sitting weakly in my palm. It worked on the video, I muttered, trying to figure out what I did wrong. It looked really simple online. Malcolm frowned. You owe me five dollars. Sorry, maybe I can tape them back together. I sat down on the garage floor, my head in my hands. I guess I'll have to live with a cat. That's the spirit. Give up. Malcolm pumped his fist over his head. The world needs more quitters. It's not funny, I mumbled as Malcolm snorted. But even though Malcolm was the one laughing, I didn't hear his voice. I heard Lexi's. Malcolm's mouth moved, but I imagined my sister's happy snicker bellowing out as she cradled the lumpy fluffernutter in her arms. I heard her terrifying cackling as fluffernutter, the evil, miserable cat, spat a hairball in my face and then meowed. I shuddered. Malcolm clapped me on the back. Relax. We just need an idea. Ideas are a dime a dozen. Too bad because if they were worth more, I could have sold some ideas for big money. I had a lot of them. I could throw a yard sale with all of Lexi's clothes. I could sell advertising on my soccer jersey. I could sell body parts for medical experiments. I just didn't have any good ideas. My brain started aching from thinking, but then a plan popped in my head like microwave popcorn. A telethon! I jumped up and raised my hand for Malcolm to, sl <clears throat> to slap me a joyful high five, but Malcolm just looked at my hand and left it unslapped. It stayed up in the air, alone. Huh? He asked. <clears throat> a telethon. You know, when people call on the phone and donate money for stuff. They have them on television. They raise money to fight diseases and pay for TV shows. I kept my hand up, ready for slapping. I know what a telethon is, said Malcolm. Then why aren't you hitting my high five? Malcolm didn't answer. He just kept staring at me and I eventually lowered my hand since my arm got tired. We would hold a dog telethon. People call in and give me money for a dog. People love dogs. They donate all sorts of money. I'd probably be a millionaire. Malcolm shook his head. You've officially lost all your marbles. I knew it was just a matter of time. No one is going to call in and give you money for a dog. Someone might, I said. Malcolm shook his head again. But he was wrong. This was the sort of idea that won pet challenges. Easy, profitable. All I needed was a television station to broadcast our show. You know, telethons don't just ask for money, said Malcolm, following me inside the house as I banged the front door open. They have entertainment, singers, dancers, celebrities. How are you going to put on a TV show? I can do magic. From Malcolm's expression, I could tell he didn't think that was a great idea. Those are just details anyway. The television station will we'll deal with that stuff. All I need is to talk with a dog lover at the station. Or someone completely insane. Apparently, the tel... Apparently, television stations are filled with cat lovers. No one was interested in my idea, and I called three different stations. Two of the stations hung up on me. The third one put me on hold for like 10 minutes, and then some guy tried to sell me a cable television package. No, I said, I don't need cable. We have cable. I want to put on a telethon. You want telephone service? Asked a man. No, a telethon not a telephone, so I can get a dog. Your dog wants a telephone? Why would a dog need a telephone? I asked, frustrated. How do I know? You're the one looking to buy him one. <clears throat> so that didn't go well at all. Neither did the roughly 42 other ideas I suggested to Malcolm. No, 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 said Malcolm, roughly 42 times. I don't hear any great ideas coming from you. 
I'm not about to be living with a cat. He was right, of course. I'd be the one sharing a house with an unspeakable ball of ugly ratty fur. It was my job to come up with that single solid idea, and I needed to do it first. <clears throat> the end of the month was getting closer, and with every passing second. I suppose ideas aren't worth a dime a dozen. Only bad ones are. Good ones are worth a fortune. A really good one's worth $500 at least. Remember, you need to think smaller, said Malcolm before he went home. Right, I nodded. Smaller. Lexi sat in the kitchen, studying with a friend from school. So at least she wasn't making any money either. Her friend left after about an hour, and then another friend came over to study. Well, let Lexi do homework. I wasn't going to waste time studying, not when I could be making money. I'd think smaller, and by thinking smaller, I'd think of a really big idea. But idea thinking makes you hungry. I went to the pantry to find a snack, and that's when I thought of an idea that was big, but also small. Apples. I couldn't believe it. We had five giant bags of apples in our pantry. There must have been a hundred of them. It would take a year for Mom, Lexi, and me to eat all of these. I'm sure, I'm not sure what Mom was thinking when she bought them, but my creative juices started flowing, creative apple juices. I would become the town apple tycoon. I hauled those apple bags to the garage and loaded them into our red wagon. The apples were pretty heavy, so the wagon's wheels made an even louder scratching noise than usual. But that's okay. Ice cream trucks make loads of money because you heard their music playing. My wheel squawking was sort of like ice cream truck music, except rusty and jarring and annoying. Apples. Ten cents an apple, I yelled. I knew I wasn't going to suddenly get rich selling apples for 10 cents a pop, but I had to start somewhere. I learned a lesson from my lousy car washing plan. You can't charge too much money for things. It's better to give people a deal. That's how you get repeat business. It was like a business rule, and I was the town apple tycoon, so I needed good business sense. Malcolm would be impressed. It worked, too. People flocked to my squeaky red wagon apple cart. They were actually standing in line. A lot of people acted surprised, too. Just 10 cents? What's the catch, kid? Said some guy in a tie. No catch, just business, I boomed. 10 cents? That's a bargain, said a lady pushing a stroller. Give me four, please, and keep the change. Thank you, I said. She handed me two quarters, and I handed her four apples. Tell your friends, Otto's apples are the best deal in town. I'll take two, said a girl in an oversized college sweatshirt. Here you are. If anyone asks, you got these from Otto, the apple tycoon. I sold all my apples in less than an hour. I felt pretty good about myself as I wheeled my wagon home. I whistled and jangled all the change in my pocket, trying to drown out the horrid, rusty squealing of the wagon. Not that I was a good whistler, but I try. Whistling is hereditary, I think. I blame Dad. I entered the house, kicked off my shoes, dropped my jacket on the ground, and then saw Ma's, Mom standing in my way just outside the mudroom. She had her arms crossed, but her face looked even crosser. Immediately, I could tell I was on thin ice, and then ice was cracking, and that ice was cracking quickly. Where are my apples? asked Mom. I sold them? I squirmed. You would have thought I said something like I sold Lexi to the circus. That wasn't a bad idea, except I couldn't imagine anyone paying more than $5 for her, so it wouldn't be worth the effort. Mom's already red face turned redder. The veins in her neck popped out a little. Those apples were for the hospital to make apple pies. They're having a fundraiser. I needed to drop them off today. If she were a dog, she would have bared her teeth. Oh, I said in a tiny voice. Kind of funny that I sold them, huh? I gave a small smile, but I don't think Mom thought it was funny at all, and I quickly stopped smiling. What am I supposed to do now, she demanded. Why would I have so many apples in the house if they weren't for something important? 
I hung my head and looked at my socks and away from mom's eyes. Her eyes had a way of making me feel even guiltier than you already did. And I felt pretty guilty. Sorry. Mom took a deep breath. Otto, I think it's great that you're looking for creative ways to make money, but not if it's going to cost me more money. Understand? You're going to have to pay me back for those apples. Otherwise, it wouldn't be fair. How much did you sell them for? 10 cents each. Mom's frown grew more frownier. 10 cents? What were you thinking? That I'd become an apple tycoon. I whimpered. I'm going to buy more apples and you're going to pay me back every cent. But apples cost a lot more than 10 cents each. But I'm trying to save $500, not spend $500, I whined. Then you better start thinking of ways to earn money that doesn't cost me any. She walked away in a huff. Before she turned the corner, she yelled back, and hang up your jacket and put your shoes away. They don't belong on the floor. Sorry, I called again. My mom stomped off and I spied Lexi in the kitchen smirking at me. I hated that Lexi smirk. I would knock it off her face all the way to Timbuktu and everyone knows that's really far away. I'm not sure where it is exactly. Geography isn't my best subject, but I don't really have a best subject unless you count lunch. I'd earn my pet dog money and I'd wipe away Lexi's snarky smiles like they were specks of dirt and I was a bottle of hand sanitizer. Just you wait, I mumbled as I brushed past her. She giggled back. That night, I called Malcolm and told him about my problems. That's what friends are for, to make you think of money-making ideas and hear you complain about things. You have to consider the cost of production. It's simple economics, he said. It doesn't sound so simple to me. I stifled a yawn. I couldn't think of too many things more boring than economics. It is simple, he insisted. You have to figure out how much something costs and then sell it for more. So selling our silverware for 25 cents a fork? Not a good idea? Probably not. After we hung up, I had plenty to think about. I grabbed a notebook from my desk and began filling it up with excellent ideas, each, each which cost or practically nothing. I could sell dirt. I could sell air. I could sell soap scum. Okay, maybe not all my ideas were genius level, but I kept writing new ones down. Eventually, I'd think of the perfect plan. I could sell dryer lint. I could sell the hopes and dreams of kids who just want a dog and not a stupid cat. I kept on writing. 